Hello and welcome to the Apostolic Teachings Podcast. This episode is a part of the media ministry of the Honorable Bishop Paul A. Weatherly. This episode was recorded during one of our Bible studies that take place on Sunday mornings, Thursday nights, and our Young People's Tuesday night Bible class. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the message. Fellowship with believers. I honestly did not know before I said what I said with God knows. Because I'm not teaching this morning. Minister Weatherly is going to teach for us this morning. And uh, I may help him a little bit, but uh, but we're going to have him come. Come on, why don't you greet him and say, Lord bless. Lord bless. Minister Weatherly. Minister Weatherly. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about, like Bishop said, fellowship with believers. And as, as I was saying, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking to myself <laughs> how he's hitting the nail on the head. I didn't, I didn't study either. Um, the focus thought for today, if you read in the, in the little box that says focus thought, it says God has an eternal desire for fellowship with humans and has ordained fellowship among believers. All right. So my first question, I think, really is do you believe that? Right. That's the first thing. Do you believe that? You believe that God has an eternal, meaning long-lasting, everlasting desire for fellowship with humans, and with that, has ordained fellowship with believers. I believe. So today we're going to kind of get into finding out what this means and how we can have fellowship and what it means for us to have fellowship. All right. Uh, the focus verse here says John, First John one seven, but I'm going to start at the beginning. I want us just to have a little background to what he's talking about here, the writer here. And on verse 1, it says, That which was from the beginning. So let's stop there because there's a comma there. Right. What is the beginning? Does anybody know? Anybody? God. God. All right. Anybody else? Creation. Creation. All right. Absolutely. Both of those are both those are, are absolutely correct. God and creation. That is from the beginning, and that is the beginning. The from is God. That's who is talking about in the beginning is creation as we know it, as we know the world. Right, because scripture says that God is from everlasting right. to everlasting. Right. With no beginning and no end. Absolutely. So whenever you talk about beginning, as a human. Right. The beginning is creation. Yes, sir. But now if you're talking about from an angel standpoint, mm -hmm. they're not from the beginning of God because they were created. Right. Absolutely. So they can't even go back as far as mm -hmm. God. Yes, sir. Now they go back eons of time because God used them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they're from the beginning. Right, absolutely. Because anything created has a beginning. Absolutely, and that's why I wanted to talk about the context because context is important. Right. Because your beginning and your beginning and your beginning might all be somewhere different. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, that, that's something that I've talked with different people about. I spoke with somebody yesterday, and they were talking about how they didn't feel like they were knowledgeable enough to do certain things in the church. And I said, it's not about the knowledge. It's about having the desire. And right. so the beginning of some person to walk with, with God might be uh, two years old. They might be raised in the church. And someone else might be 35 walking into church for the first time. And so their beginnings are different. But that doesn't mean that the significance of the beginning is different. Right. Does that make sense? The significance is not changed. And that's an important thing to realize when coming to fellowship is that everybody has a different start. Everybody has a different understanding than what you may have. And so that's where we're going to get to it. It is it's important to come to a common understanding. We're going to get into that later in these, this text here. Now let's, let's move on. It says, uh, that which was from the beginning, so God, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon. Can, can we stop there? Mm -hmm. Every time we get to a comma, we need to stop because that is a thought. Right. And every thought in the Bible is important. 
Amen. That which we have seen with our eyes. We are talking about God. Right. And so I think we'll cover it probably further down. But we have to understand that the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. So there's a conflict in our minds. Mm -hmm. How how can the scripture say that we have seen him with our eyes, God? Right. Well, we're about to get into that. So okay. Right. Um, so I just want to make sure that we have a premise of, of answering that. Right. Okay. Because what will happen is people will be confused and say, well, the Bible is contradicting itself. It mm -hmm. says no man has seen God at any time. But the scripture here says that we have seen him with our eyes. Right. And right. So, I'll, I'll let you uh, cover that. Absolutely. But I want to make sure that we are we're really looking at each um, segment of Scripture. Right. Rather than just reading over. Because that's why people make so many mistakes in the Bible, is they're not searching the Scripture mm -hmm. for every thought that compiles. Because one Scripture can have four, five, six, eight different Absolutely. thoughts uh, that compiles it. And if we just run past it, we'll never know what it really says on the inside. Right. But, but thank you. And so that's what I, I was about to just read this and then take it bit by bit. Here it says, uh, where did I leave off here? Which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. And this last bit is going to give us the key to understanding All right. a little bit deeper of the word of life. All right. And I don't know, in my book, the word here, where it says word is capitalized, I think yes. it's on the screen as well. Yes. And so the reason why it's capitalized, that's important. If you go and you look at the Gospel of John, let's and let's go to John 1 and 1, because that is what this is referencing here. The first yes. five verses here yes. is, a, is a direct reference to the Gospel of John because it's the same writing. Yes, sir. And so the, this first John here is a general epistle. It was sent to somebody uh, or to a, to a certain person in a church to be taught and to be dealt with. Um, here it says in the beginning so we have a similar we have the same exact uh -huh. start talking about the beginning right in the beginning was the word all, all right. right and the word was God and the word was with the word was with God the word was God all right the same was the beginning with God and then if we go down I believe it's verse 14 let's go down to verse 14 and the word was made flesh uh -huh. and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So I want to deal with this real quick and try to be brief. I'm going to try to be. So number one here, the word, again, the reason why it's important is because the word is a metaphor for somebody. That somebody being Jesus. All right. And when you look here, it is very apparent when you read the Gospels, Jesus was God, right. was the Son of God. And the reason why both of those can be true is because here it says he was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. That's talking about the glory of Jesus. The glory of the only God. So the reason why here he's the son and God. I want to make this. Because sometimes it confuses people. Sometimes people say, well, how, how can God be here and then also be here? And they, they don't understand how that relationship works. Can we go, you, to John, go to John 10 and 30. John, John 10 and 30, absolutely. And that will explain uh, <laughs> and it's like what, what he said sometimes we, we get confused here this is Jesus speaking it says I and my father are one that way then that settles it that makes it plain and some people have said that this is a metaphor of some sorts but again looking at the context the verse right under it says and then the Jews took up the stones again to stone so the Jewish people around this time understood what he was saying he understood that he was saying i am god which at the right. time if you were to claim that you were god right. you would be killed yeah you'd blast me right at that moment so the jews understood at this point in time that that he's speaking from a literal perspective i i and my father are one right and so some people have a hard time understanding that but when we understand that god is omnipresent and can be in a service in in china a service in Mexico and a service in America, all moving at the same time, all having the Holy Ghost move. Yes, sir. Something, something that, you know, I think right now uh, they have a, a church. Uh, I'm going to put that in quotations. They have a church that they call Life Church. Mm -hmm. And they, have, they only have one guy who is um, preaching. Right. 
So today that one guy, I don't know his name, he's the pastor or whatever. And so he is all over America, maybe even further, I don't know how far he reaches, but he's preaching and he's being seen instantaneously. Right. All over the world. Mm -hmm. Okay? Through technology. Right. And yet we try to put God in a box. Mm -hmm. If he can do that and be seen all over right. the world, he ain't got no he's not God. Mm -hmm. It's done through man's technology. Right. But God spoke this world into mm -hmm. existence. He said, let there be light. And there was a sun that came up. Mm -hmm. Let there be stars and stars came up. So how is it hard to believe that that kind of genius, that kind right. of power, that kind of authority that can speak worlds into existence, right. he can't be in two places at once. Mm -hmm. But you can have an earthly thing. You can understand right. that. You can understand, <laughs> oh, this man's preaching all over the world today, and we see him instantaneously. Mm -hmm. We can accept that. But the mighty God that formed all things, mm -hmm. he can't be in a body we call Jesus Christ and right. still be the God of heaven. And, and that, brings me, that brings us to another point here. Um, if God can create Adam from dust, create his own, create a, a body... Right. Right. Can form you in the, the in your mother's womb. Why can't he do it for himself? Right. And so that's where that son, the begotten part, is coming from. Is is talking about the body, the not. Sonship. And so that's where people have. They don't. Un, some people struggle with the understanding. They think it's another person or another personality. It is a, when it's talking about the son or the begotten. It's not about the, the body, the flesh right. that was being used by the spirit or the mind of God. So let's continue back here in. Uh, uh, 1 John, 1 John. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that kind of make it more clear? Because sometimes it can be confusing. And that's why the Bible says to search the scriptures. For in them, and Jesus said, for in them ye think you have eternal life. And that right there, people, again, they go over that. He's saying search them because you think that you're right, but you're not. <laughs> uh, verse 2 here, it, again, uh, John the Gospel of John and John 1 here, these, these are kind of mirroring each other. It says, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew forth unto that eternal life. So what, what is this here that he's talking about? What is this life that he's talking about? Uh-huh. I, I, I want to see. See, you know, I, I believe the scripture. Yes, sir. We can say a lot of things, but I want to make sure it's crystal clear. Okay. From the Bible. Yes, sir. So Isaiah 45 and 5. And, and, and I'll, I, I don't mean to uh, no. take, take your Absolutely uh, not. lesson, but so many times we, we say things and expect people to believe them without a lot of scripture. You know mm -hmm. me, I love a lot of scripture because then you can't lie to me. If I got scripture, you can say what you want, but I ain't listening. So. It was 45 and five. Uh, That's all right. That's all right. Because it doesn't matter how long this takes, as long as we get it right. Mm -hmm. What does that say? I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what? And there is none else. And there is none else. There is what? No God beside me. Uh-huh. I gird thee through that hast not known me. Mm -hmm. So... That thou might know from the rising of the sun and from, mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, west that there is what? None beside me. There's none beside me. I right. am the Lord. Right. And what? There is none else. So all of these lying preachers that talk about Trinity, mm -hmm. that three whatever, they are against Scripture. Right. It's a lie from hell mm -hmm. that has been propagated by the devil. Because anywhere in Scripture, when you had any other God, you were an infidel. You were, or you were. Listen, God would destroy you. Right. You if you had nations. an idol, mm -hmm. anything other than that one God is an idol. Mm -hmm. He would not allow. It. He says in here another place that he's a jealous God. Right. And he will. You will have no other gods beside him. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. 
and then I'll let I'll, I'll leave you alone. You're right. But but we we have to have Bible. Mm -hmm. All these things that people say don't matter to me. I want the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm gonna live by. I want the Bible. Right. What's it say? Hit uh, verse four. Hear of Israel. Hear of Israel. The what? Lord our God is one Lord. Mm -hmm. Ephesians four and five. I, I, sorry. You're right. Look, I, I want I want to be clear. I want us to be clear, and, and I'm sorry to take okay. this away from your lesson. What does it say? Four and five. One Lord. One Lord. One thing. Wait a minute. Now we just seen in Deuteronomy said. Huh? One Lord, one faithful God. But what it say in the last we just read said that here is for the Lord our God is one Lord. Mm -hmm. And this here says there's one Lord. We can't change that. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's how many gods? Verse 6. One God and Father of all. What? There's above all. Above all and, and through all. all. And what? And you all. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go. Mm-hmm. But we gotta have Bible. Right, absolutely. So, yes, sir. So I hijacked you. You're all right. You didn't hijack nothing. You just helped my point. Okay. So let's see here. Let's let me get back here. So let's go back here to First uh, John, and then let's just go down to verse three here. So again, we're we're talking about fellowship here and. And what I, was, I said, I mentioned it earlier about the all things in common. That, that's why it's important that Bishop is doing what he's doing. Because he's trying to make sure that we have a common understanding. Right. That we're all in one mind. And again, we're going to continue to read why that's important. But I'm going to go on a, on a quick tangent. And then I promise we'll get back into the verses. I oh, promise. Go ahead. So, we deal with the focus up. It says, God has an eternal desire for fellowship with humans. And it's ordained fellowship among believers. Has, I wonder if anybody stopped and asked himself, why has he ordained it? Why has he ordained it? Because it's one thing for God to have fellowship with humans. All right. We see that all throughout the Bible. That's clear. That God desires a relationship with humans, with human and, and mankind. We see that all throughout. You know, he, he created Adam and Eve so he could walk with them in the cool of the day and have a relationship. You know, he, he, he allowed the kingdom of Israel to, to become great. When it was great, when it was had a relationship with God, because He desired to have a people. Right. He desired to have children, if you will. Um. But the reason, so so, that in itself we can understand that. But why does He want humans to have fellowship with other humans? Is it? I, I know that kind of sounds like a weird question, but has anybody ever wondered why? And, and some of those things that we just kind of skip over, just assume. Mm -hmm. I, I would say because He wants production of more. Humans. All right, absolutely. He wants children. Yes, sir. And when you put two humans together with a relationship, they mm -hmm. produce more. Yes, sir. And that's what God is trying to do is get us to have a relationship with him. He's our father. I'm his child. He wants the same thing for us as he has for himself. Absolutely. Can we go deeper, though? Go ahead. Can we go deeper? Anybody else? Thank you, sir. The unity. All right. It's the unity. It. It's the all things common. It's the togetherness. Yes, yes. If, if you look at the word fellowship, that if you look at the Greek, fellowship means it can mean a lot of different things. But some of the different words that kind of popped out to me was community, sharing, uh -huh. intimacy. All right. So that is what God desires for his people. Like you said, he desires for his children, his people to have a community, to have a community where they can all worship him and be one with him. Right. Right. And so it's that is why when was it the prophet Elijah who was in the cave? Right. Elijah. He was in the cave and he was being hunted by this wicked queen. Right. And he gets down on his face and he's crying. And he's saying, Lord, it's just me. I'm, I'm by myself. Yeah. I'm the only one. And then he says, How many people did he say, Bishop? Was it? Well, he said, God, he said, I and I alone. Mm -hmm. Right, I and I alone. Oh, I and I alone. There ain't nobody else with me. I'm the only prophet left. Right. And God told him, he said, I have 7,000 that mm -hmm. have not bowed a knee nor kissed the lips of Baal. Right. 
the devil, Lord, but a false god. Right. I got 7,000. Jezebel was the queen that killed everybody. Baal is a false god. Right. And so, -A -A mm -hmm. uh, so that was so, a king uh, of God. You know, he was saying, there, there, there's 7,000. You think you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. I got 7,000 more. You don't even know about it. Right. And a lot of times we think we're over here in this little old world by ourselves. And so when but we if get we by ourselves, mm -hmm. if we go to the convention, you'll see we got people all over the world right. that love just like we love, that are our family just like I, we got folks in. Africa, mm -hmm. Philippines, mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. Australia, New Zealand. I mean, we got all kinds of people just like us. They have little little churches like us right. that are believing what the Bible says and teaching what the Bible says. Right. Even if we're not in the big uh, mega churches and the big buildings, a lot of times people look at stuff mm -hmm. and they don't realize that God ain't in stuff. That's right. God's in people. That's right. And so uh, the unity has to happen even if it's spread out. We're still right. in union, unity with them both. And so the reason why, because when we see this situation with that prophet, he was alone and by himself. He was isolated. Right. And that's when he fell and became discouraged. Right. And the re-encouraging thing to him was that there was other people who were with him, who had the same mindset. And so that's something that, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but that's something that the devil likes to do. He likes to isolate you and get you away you from go. everybody else. Yes, sir. Humans are naturally social creatures. Right. All right, that's the scientific side, but let's look at the biblical side. The biblical side is, he's seen Adam alone, and he said, it's not good for a man to be alone, and he created Eve. So when you're by yourself, when you don't have people around you, it puts you in a place where you feel bad. And I'm speaking from experience. When I was dealing and battling with depression, I wanted to isolate myself in my room. I wanted to do things to myself that I shouldn't have done. And that was because I was not letting people in in my life that could be helping me. Right. The only person I would go to was God, and I didn't have it within myself to get the strength that I needed. So community, sharing with one another, intimacy, the, the, the love with one another, that is important. Yes. An important factor. And we're going to see here in verse 3. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. That which we have seen and heard. And this is talking about the, the apostles. That's who the we is, the apostles. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So here, he's saying, because we want to share the fellowship, we want to bring you into this light. And we know that you're already a part of this. We want to connect with you. That's what he's saying here. Both of us are, are, are agreeing on this on these same things. Verse 4 says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Verse 5, it says, Then this is the message which we have heard of him. So this is the message that the apostles are trying to bring out to the world and trying to bring to the person that he's writing to here. This is this is the what uh Paul or John here, he's saying this is the, the crux of what Jesus' message was. And we declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Can we go back to mm -hmm. six? Yes, sir. Because six is a warning. Right. Yes, sir. If we say what? That we have fellowship with him. Right. If we say that we're saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm in the light. I have no darkness. Right. That's what it said. Right. So if we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness. Right. Now, that means you're going to be perfect. You ain't going to sin. No. no. That's a lie, too. All these other trying to pretend like they're super saints. <laughs> I'm holy. You are lying. The truth ain't in Because it's one thing to fall into sin. Right. Or some people just walk into it. There's a difference when you fall into sin. Mm -hmm. I made a mistake and I fell into sin. But this here said, if we walk in darkness. 
Right. right. That means it's a continual thing. Yes, sir. I'm doing the same stuff over and over again. Mm -hmm. I keep drinking every day. I keep doing dope every day. We're making our bed and we're you're sleeping. Lying. Mm -hmm. the, the truth ain't in you. Right. Because you're walking in darkness. You're not walking right. in white. When you walk in light, that means you have fellowship with God, and God is a holy God. Well, let, let's let's real quick let's look at what the light means. Go ahead. The light here is a metaphor, and some of the different things that it's describing here is number one, it's a metaphor for God, and the reason why the dictionary says this is delicate, subtle, pure, brilliant quality. Those are the things that it it, it describes who God is. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's delicately subtle. God isn't in your face. No. But he's pure and brilliant quality. All right. Light also means truth uh -huh. and an open understanding. Those are the few ones that I, I, I highlighted here. So when we're walking in light or walking with God, those, we should be matching that criteria right there. Yes. We, we should be pure. We should be having good quality. We should be good quality people, if you will. And you can find out how to be like that by looking at the example that God has set forth through Jesus. We should have truth and open understanding. Well, how do we get that? God's word. That's it. So here he, he's saying, if we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, so what is darkness? The darkness would be the opposite of whatever I just read here. The darkness is opposite of light. Right. So let's move on here from the focus verse and get into the, the lesson text. We've spent a lot of time on here. But I hope this is kind of first open up our understanding about fellowship um, real quick one more thing on this the writer he, he's reaching out he's reaching out to get people reaching out to find people to have fellowship with right that's an important thing in this day and age where everyone wants to be their own thing or have their everything everybody wants to be separate from everyone else right and well being holy and separate is good sometimes the division in between that cannot be all right. And I'm going to leave that where it sits because I don't want to say too much about anybody or start anything. But it's important to reach out to those who share a like-minded thing with you. And that's a good thing to do. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. And we're going to start on verse 37 here. And just some background information. Uh, this is on the day of Pentecost. And they gathered in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came down and filled the place and so then Peter started preaching and explained what was going on. And one of the things he said, he talked about how they crucified, the Jewish people crucified Jesus. And how he was God, he was the Messiah, he was one of the sent. And so now picking up here on verse 37, it says, When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So I'm going to stop right here first. I want to highlight here, it says that when they heard this, when they heard the word of God, when they heard the message, they were pricked with their heart. So that's the first thing. To be truly in the light, to be truly having fellowship with God, we have to realize and be truthful with ourselves. And I think Bishop talked about this and taught this a lot on Thursday about repentance, about being repentant. We have to truly know where we're at, truly realize where we've been and where we can go. And that's the first thing when people, like what Bishop said earlier, are real. These people were real. They said to Peter, and the rest of the apostles, man, brother, what shall we do? We've done wrong. How can we fix it? <laughs> so that repentance that I talked, uh, taught on Thursday night, right? it, it talked about a godly sorrow. Mm -hmm. Repentance is not just saying I did wrong, right? but it's an introspective mm -hmm. look at myself and know that what I was doing was against God. Right. And that I am sorry. I mean, you know, when you really are sorry, you tell somebody sorry, a lot of times, most of the time, tears will flow. Mm -hmm. If you're really, truly sorry. Right. Because it affects you on the inside. Just say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, it's different than saying, oh, I'm sorry, cut mine. You know, go ahead. That's, that's not really. Right. But if you push them out of the way to get out of my way, and God begin to deal with your heart, there would be a little difference in the way mm -hmm. that you came back to them. There would be some. Yes, when it's real, tears come. That's what Bob talked about. Fruit mm -hmm. and meat for repentance. That's the meat part. Or the fruit part is the weeping. Right. When you're really sorry, you'll weep. Mm -hmm. 
if you know that you hurt somebody, you're weak. Right. And so that's what these men were in a state of realizing that this wrong that we did to this man, we allowed him to be killed. We actually called for him to be killed. Right. And his blood is on our hands. Mm -hmm. Because we have to understand Jewish people that was very uh, factual that if you did wrong to somebody, their life, their blood was on your hands mm -hmm. and God right. would require of you, of you. Mm -hmm. for doing it. Absolutely. So, uh, even so much so that the law stated if I kill your brother, then your brother had to kill me to make it right. Right. In the law. Mm -hmm. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Right. Huh? Well, that was just the law that you have to recompense. You have to pay back. Right. That you gave death, your payment is death. But get this. Even back then with the law and its harshness, there was some opportunity to escape that. Get to the city of refuge. Because there were cities of refuge, get this, which were kept up by the Levitical priests. Right. And that is what kept them from facing that judgment. That's what this when, place is here. Right, exactly. And this so that's what, when, 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 even though they, they have blood on our hands, them doing that, that was the opening up to make that city refuge for everyone, if, if that makes sense. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all of our sins. That's right. And so even though they have blood on our hands and it needs to be paid, it had been paid by Jesus' death. And right. really when you think about it, it's kind of, it's kind of, <laughs> makes your mind kind of wrap. It's almost paradoxical. Right. Because their salvation was caused by their wrongdoing. Right. I know that sounds crazy, no, but in that context, it's, it's true. That's exactly right. Um, and so, let's continue on here. And as we're reading, I want you to notice how it's talking about them as a whole. It's talking about the people as a whole. They're all together on this. It says in verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, so this is his, his response, Repent, so feel truly sorrow, real sorrow. And then be baptized, every one of you, in the name, singular, of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this right here, this is how we make it right. This is how we start our walk in life if you will, that we were reading about earlier. Verse 39 says, for the promises unto you. Can we explain what remission of sin? Okay. Remission of sins, that is the removal and the eradication of the sin. So when you go down in Jesus' name, that baptism, you're symbolizing the blood washing over you, washing your sins away. And what that is, is taking away to where in the past you could ask for forgiveness. And the Bible talks about if you ask for forgiveness, he's just to forgive you. But forgiveness and remission and removal is different. Right. Forgiveness I can, um, I can be forgiven by the court of a crime, but it will still, still be on my rap sheet. So, mm -hmm. you can have forgiveness at the court, right? but you got to pay a fine. Right, right. So what happens is, is that sin that we have is our fine. Mm -hmm. And it demands payment. Right. Up until Jesus Christ, the payment was death. Mm-hmm. All right? For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. is, eternal life. is eternal life. So our payment for all of our sins when we're baptized in Jesus' name, Jesus paid that debt with right. his blood. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to be baptized. The Bible says that we're buried with him in baptism. Right. That right. means how many people you know have been buried on top of the ground? How many people you know have been sprinkled with some water? No. That's why we, when we get that baptismal tomb, we go all the way under the water. We're buried with him. Right. People that are buried go under. Mm -hmm. And we rise, the Bible says, to the newness of life. So when we come out of that water, we're a new creature. The Bible says, all things are passed away. All things, behold, all things are become new. Right. That moment, we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. And so... We have to understand that being baptized, repenting first and being baptized, is your way out of sin. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was a 
God does it through patterns. Yes. That's how he works. He works through patterns. And to help us kind of understand this a little bit better, I'm going to walk us through briefly. And if you have more questions about this, you can come to me or Bishop afterwards and we can give you some more information because I know it's going to be kind of brief. But when Adam and Eve first sinned, they tried to cover themselves with leaves. They tried to hide their sin themselves. Right. And God slew the animal and took the skins and covered them. So that was the first pattern of that. If you read, because the Bible says there is no there is no covering right or remission without without blood. blood. Mm -hmm. Right. Shed without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Right. So there was no way to cover them until blood was drawn because right. of that happening in the garden. Blood has to be shed because the Bible says that life is in the blood. Right. Mm -hmm. Life for life. Back then, the shedding of that animal's life, they were giving life for their life. Right. And so that is what it started the sacrifice. That is what started that the, the, the sacrifice. That's the only way that they were not slain, as if he slay an animal right. and shed that blood. That blood was given for their life. And that's where the vehicle is. they're covering, that's what God is. He's covering. Them animal skins were the type and shadow of what Jesus was right. going to do. He was going to shed his blood just like that animal. Mm -hmm. His blood was shed and was given as a sacrifice for their sin. Jesus' was blood was given for the sacrifice of our sin. Right. And that's where when you read in the book of Leviticus, which puts out all the different sacrifices and how they're to be done, if you look and study, Jesus fulfills every single one of those. Yes. He fulfills the reason. So each and every one of those had a symbolic reason for why this animal was to be sacrificed this way and why this thing and this thing. Jesus fills every yeah, single right. one of those. Right. So they all sacrifices encompasses in that one pure. And that's another thing. That's why. Because Jesus was pure. Yes. And so the animals, they, they couldn't fully cover it because, no. because the scripture, scripture escapes me. But it talks about man being above the animals. Where it talks about the, the master and the servant. Right. And so I'll, I'll have to get back to, if you guys oh, have questions about it, I'll have no, to get back to you. But. That, that's, he said he gave dominion mm -hmm, right. over every creature. Right. And so uh, if you have dominion over it, it can't have power over you. Right. And so it can only do so much. It can only do so much because right. you had power over it. But when you have God come down and manifest in flesh, right. there's a little bit more power than that. There's all power. <laughs> all power. Um, so I wanted to kind of explain that, uh, why he's talking about that here. And then verse 39 here, let's move on. It says, For the promise is unto you and unto your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So that's us right here. Right. I, I read something a few days ago that said salvation and, and, and heaven was not for anybody but the Jewish people. And I, I just kind of took me back to this scripture right here, but it's all right. <laughs> here he's saying, well, what this is saying here and what this, what this entails is that Jesus' death was not just for the people back then. It was not just for the people who killed him. It was for every person in every nation. That's why right before Jesus uh, ascended on to heaven, he instructed them to first preach in Jerusalem and then go out of all and all uh, Judea and then Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So the message is for everybody. It says here in verse 41, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So here, this is dealing with the fellowship part. The people who gladly received, gladly. who were happy about it, happy about Jesus, who were together in the idea, all thought that it was right. It was added about 3,000 souls that day. Well, they were responding. Right, right. You can be happy about something but not do it. Absolutely. But there's two parts of this. Mm -hmm. They that gladly received his word were baptized. Right, that's the first thing. When you realize that what he said was repent to be baptized for a of your sins, and you'll receive the Holy Ghost, they not only heard it, but there was action. They went in right. and said, okay, right. I realize that I still have my sins. I need to be baptized. And, and when they did that, that same day, 
Yes. And let's, let's also look at it from this perspective. They were so happy about it that they got and brought people. Because in that upper room where, where uh, Peter was preaching, there was only 120. But that same day, there was 3,000 souls. So that's what fellowship will do. Right. That's what fellowship will do. Yeah. When you're happy about God, when you're thankful about what he's done, you're going to go out and tell somebody. Right. And again, talking about that genuine realness. When, when people see that you're being real, you're being truthful about it, they'll, they'll, they'll consider it. They'll come yeah. along. I was, I was talking to somebody yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop was trying to ignore me. I'm over here. I was, I was wearing him down. I was like, I was like, should you go to church tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come. It's alright. I'll, I'll pick for you guys. Come on. You know, I was, and now I don't know if he's coming or not. But he said, he said at the, at the end of the day when we when, when he ended up, he's like, I might, I might come. And so that, that's what that'll do. He can tell that I'm serious about it. He can tell that he knows that that's, I work and I go to church. That's my life. And so when people see that, when they see that light, that light that is within you when you walk with God. It'll draw people. Yes, sir. But no one will come to God mm -hmm. through you if they don't like you. That's right. Absolutely. The Bible says, Absolutely. He that wins souls is wise. It's wise. He that had a friend must show himself friendly. Mm -hmm. If they don't like you, they're not going to like your God. Right. And so we have to be, have fellowship mm -hmm. with these people. That young man is a friend. He has fellowship right. with you. You guys go hang out. We were out fishing, mm -hmm. just doing things, and enjoying one another's company. Right. But if they don't like you, if you don't have a likable way about mm -hmm. you, they ain't coming to your church and they're not going to find God. Mm -hmm. So the fellowship part <coughs> falls on me. Right, absolutely. If I'm ugly and mean and uh, hard to deal with, Ain't, I ain't bringing a soul. And then, if you want to preach to somebody, ain't nobody listening mm -hmm. to you. Right. Because you done turned them off. Right. So if you don't have a loving spirit, mm -hmm. and have a prayerful heart and mind, and an inviting personality. And you know, there, there's a lot of churches that do not have truth that have mastered it. That's right. They've mastered it. I mean, the love it, of God it's... Wrong. I have said this. I think I've said this to my mom, or maybe maybe to Bishop before. When I, you know, I see them on the street or encounter them, I've said before it's almost sickening how nice they are. And you know what? That's awful. That is awful. That that is what came into my mind when I'm being truthful with myself. I'm being real with myself. Right. It's sad that I feel like it's sickening that they're that nice. But they're doing something right because they got that mega church, yep. you know, with the hundreds of thousands of people. Without truth. And so that's something that. Not that we're not nice, but that's something to continue to strive for. How can we be love. more welcoming, be more loving? Because we can always progress. We can always improve. Right. Um, so here, th this is another key verse here in verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer. So what, what does this mean? Let's break this down. They continued steadfastly. It was a continual, constant thing. They were constantly talking about the doctrine. They're constantly talking about what Jesus said. That's why, that's why there were so many manuscripts in the New Testament. That's why there were so many gospels that were being mass produced because people were talking about it. This was an important thing what Jesus had to say. It says here, the fellowship. So what is that? The intimacy, the community, the, the sharing. It says the breaking of bread. They were eating together, living together, right. hanging out together. And prayers. Not just praying to God. But prayers for one another. Right, right. They were praying for each other. They were strengthening and praying for a stronger relationship. It says, in fear or respect came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. They were together. Yes, sir. It says, and all had all things in common. Right. I want to point that, I want to make this, it was, not all things were exactly the same carbon cut copy, but were common. They were common. There's a difference there. We don't have to all look like the same exact person and, and dress like the same person. But the community and the, the common knowledge and common love for Christ should be what brings us together. It says, and they continue daily. That's the first thing, daily. They were doing this every day with one accord of the temple. They were going to church every day. And breaking the bread from house to house. And then afterwards, they go to house to house and hang out. Which sounds like a lot of times, that's what we used to do. 
which I know that we're, we're back in the progress of doing that. I'm excited for that. Right. And it says, and they did eat their meat with gladness and single, uh, single. singleness of heart. What does singleness mean, Bishop? One. One. Unity. All right. That, all right. That all through there. Mm-hmm. And okay. Read it. And they continually, mm -hmm. continuing daily with what? One of all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In the temple, they came to church together. Right. Their mindset was on God. Right. And then when they went and started to eat, they mm -hmm. broke bread together. Right. In everybody house to house, didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Ain't like I'm not better than you. Come on, we're going over you know, here today. We're going over. Did eat their bread with gladness. Right. We're thankful that we have this fellowship. And that's where the church houses started from. Was and the, house the house. singleness of heart means mm -hmm. one purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. Our purpose is to become more like Jesus. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Wow. That's our example. Mm -hmm. We are to be together like a, we want a relationship one-on-one -on -one with God. Right. But we can He said two things. All the law and the prophet. Every, all the Bible hangs on two things. Anybody know that? Uh, two things. The whole 66 books of the Bible hang on two things according to the Bible. Two things. To love God and love your neighbor. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And likewise, number two, loving thy neighbor. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to love our neighbor like we say we love God. That's right. That's and right. if you do that, all the Bible is fulfilled in those two things. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says God is love. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's simple. And if you say you love God whom you've not seen, I'm going to church. And yet you love not your brother, you're lying. Mm -hmm. So how can we say we love God whom we haven't seen, but yet we hate one another? Right. And Absolutely. so everywhere in the Bible these things fit together. Yes, sir. And they're all talking about one thing, and that's having a love for one another and a love for God. That's what we hold in common. Mm -hmm. That's why we are together. Because our purpose is love and God. Right. If you put a team of football, basketball, soccer, I don't care what, if you put them all together and get them to have one cause and one common goal and everybody puts everything into right. it, you'll have a win. Mm -hmm. But right. when you have a lack on the defense or you have a lack on the offense or you have somebody that's uh, in injury, mm -hmm. Your chances of winning is lessened. Right. And so this ain't a team of football team, but it's the same concept right. when we become one with God. Mm -hmm. And our purpose is to bring more people to become one with God. Mm -hmm. That's how we build the church. Absolutely. And That's it says how here, we bring people into God. And it says here in verse 47, that, that I'm glad you said that, it says praising God and having favor with all people, like what you're talking about, you know, People like you, you know. You got favor uh, with them because you're right. Not. And then it says here, and the Lord added to the uh, daily, as should it be shamed. So to the church daily, right? Daily. So their fellowship was what was increasing. That their their reaching for people, their fellowship, their their community. That is what brought people to church. What's That's the other what side of that coin? What's the other side of that coin? If you don't do those things, people ain't coming. Reason why we ain't having people saved daily is we're not loving the right way. We're not. We don't have favor mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. But when we're in line with God, He said when we're in line with Him, He would make we would have favor with God and man. Right. Right. But that's that's when we please the Lord. Well, in, in, in verse forty-five, I skipped yeah. over. It. Nobody nobody told me. Yeah. So shame on you guys. <laughs> it says, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men. As every man had need. So I'm not saying here to go out and yeah, get rid of all your stuff. But hold on, that, mm -hmm. uh, let me cover this. Okay. I have to. Okay. This is where the world has taken the word of God and twisted it. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever heard of commune? Mm -hmm. They all come together and they work together. 
And then it turned into having sex with one another and all kind of craziness because that is not what the scripture talks about. It's talking right. about I see the need of right. somebody. Right, and that's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In the church. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, well, you know, the Bible says when you see your brother in need, you say, oh, be warmed and filled. Yeah. But you <laughs> give them not the things to be right. warmed and filled. So, uh, it's, there's so many scriptures you have to put them together. Right. It was, it was about one scripture and made some kind of religion out of it or something. And here it was dealing with the spirit of helping, like you said, helping one another. That's what that's what the point was. Was that's why they had favor among the people, because these people out and about viewing the church see that they're helping each other, they're loving, they're loving each other. I mean right. it's it's a it's a real it was like a family. Yeah. And that they, they were drawn to that. And so I, I, we're past time here, so I want to leave you with one final thought. Fellowship or intimacy, sharing a community happens when two or more people are truly in line with God, walking with God earnestly, and in turn bringing a holy, a holy unity, if you will, a, a different type of, of togetherness, and then it will draw people to that. That will draw a body. Um, with that, we're going to uh, end this Bible study. I hope we got something out of this. I hope this was helpful to anybody, to somebody. Um, we're going to take a quick, almost 30 minute break. Around 11.30 we're going to come back uh, with kneeling prayer. Seeking God. Asking God to move. And just using that time to pray to God. And like we were talking about earlier, build your relationship one-on-one -on -one with God. So, is there any birthdays, anniversaries, anything? Anything going on? No? Alright, well y'all dismiss till then. Praise the Lord. Thank you again for joining us and tuning in to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to hear more lessons like these, you can find us at Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ on Facebook. We're located at 614 North Franklin Avenue, Sand Springs, Oklahoma, if you would like to attend service. God bless. Thank you.